हेलो ऑल गुड इवनिंग वेलकम आदाब सत्याल एंड वेलकम टू द एंडो मास्टर क्लास वंस अगेन गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग अभिषेक वेलकम एवरीवन अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू एवरीवन so we are in the middle of a corona period and we don't know where to go but definitely in endodontics we know where to go and pd exactly. joshi sir will good guide us with a good glide path today tonight absolutely i don't think so we have a person better than him to guide us about this most important topic of cleaning and shaping yes good evening dr para good evening dr nishu good evening dr aniket welcome to the show i hope you people are enjoying it a lot and without wasting much of your time i would like to welcome pd joshi sir on the screen please welcome pd joshi sir good evening sir and welcome to the show hi good evening anand good evening apishek good evening viewers good evening sir hi everybody thank you for inviting thanks me thanks a lot thanks a lot sir for accepting the invitation it's an absolute honor for us to have you with us My you pleasure. are like the torch bearer of indian endodontics i love your list of achievements is amazing and mind blowing so having you with us talking about this most important topic is really an honor for us sir a brief introduction about sir so sir graduated from the great nair hospital dental college mumbai he did his bds way back in 1980 and sir did his masters in 1983 i was not even conceptualized then sir <laughs> sir has been a consultant endodontist practicing in mumbai since 1980 Sir has been one of the first users of surgical operating microscope for endodontics, especially in India, since ages now. He has been using it for more than 18-20 years now. He is the head of department and honorary consultant endodontist at the Leelawati Hospital, one of the best hospitals in India. He is on the panel of Boba uh, Baba Atomic Research Center as a consultant endodontist. He is a consultant lecturer at the Zeiss MUHS Micro Dentistry Center at. government dental college and hospital mumbai that is where me and sir know each other so well from he has been teaching as a faculty on many eminent training centers like smile care encode smile india sir runs his own center called care in micro dentistry in mumbai sir has received his special training in microscopic endodontics from the university of pennsylvania and implant dentistry from germany and holland way back in 1997 I guess sir was one of the first to hold live demonstrations and you know live instrument retrievals live micro surgeries live everything I guess live everything the first would be done by PD Joshi sir in India for sure on various levels be it pamdent be it FODI be it ICD be it IES anything I'm pretty sure about it sir has been a professor in the University of Kuala Lumpur Malaysia international speaker in various forums and various countries like sri lanka thailand nepal malaysia china singapore thailand the list is on and on sir has been numerous articles sir as on the advisory board of famdent has been training students at numerous places and numerous levels and sir is a certified zeiss trainer and a certified malefa trainer i guess that's the cherry on the top Thanks a lot, sir. It's an honor to have you with us. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Anand. Thank, Thank you, sir. Once again, to uh, to join our forum second time in this lockdown period, actually. Yes. 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 Thank you so much, sir. Uh, before we start tonight, I would like to take five minutes of yours, sir. You yes. start. You were the first person in India to start a micro dentistry journey. I am sure we still face lot of problems. i believe that it is more difficult to convince the patient to get the treatment under microscope but it is more difficult to convince the dentist to use microscope even today obviously 30 years down the line we must have faced so many problems so i would like you to share your experiences with us well um when i bought the microscope um, nobody knew what microscope does and how it looks into the mouth people even used to ask me you know from where are you going to uh, show the tooth or see the tooth oh. especially the upper one do you turn the microscope upside down and yeah. then look uh, you know climb on top of the microscope and look and even um, when i purchased uh, i didn't know how to uh, use it much i was also struggling so i went to university of pennsylvania in us 
and learned under professor kim he was a pioneer in uh, uh, microscope and uh, training and also in you know microsurgery all of you should read his book uh, of endodontic microsurgery because that is what is uh, all about you know how to do microsurgery so that's how you know i started it, it looked like a white elephant to start with but it gave me the prominence uh, which i wanted as a practitioner you know as a pioneer and as a as a researcher and it allowed me to experiment with lot of things i could you know see a lot of instruments under microscope i could test uh, many instruments as a product tester so i have been uh, a product tester for densply mellifer and i have been uh, testing their files and i will show you a couple of files today uh, on the um, presentation itself like uh, true anatomy which is Uh, going to be launched or just launched in india i have already used it for close to a year now and um, <clears throat> so it gives me opportunity to you know um, go further into endodontics uh, just besides treating the patients so that was the uh, benefit of using microscope what i would say is as you mentioned that it is difficult to um, convince the patient it's not that difficult in fact it's difficult to convince the patient to stay away from the microscope once you show them um with some screens you know like if you come to my clinic i'll show you i have not kept pictures over here uh, i have a screen right on the ceiling so when the patient is lying down patient can see his uh, treatment live on the screen and he will not stop questioning you after that and if you do a co diagnosis you show him with the mirror on the screen all his cavities uh, all around including small pit and pressure sealants also he will just not get up from the chair he will say no i want to treat them now only because they look so big on the screen especially if they are magnified so they are horrified uh, looking at all those black dots on their uh, uh, teeth and they want to get them treated so it gives them some kind of um, you know understanding of what is going on with their teeth otherwise they have to believe you now they can see and believe you so that was the idea secondly you know <clears throat> you can record you can go you know and see your recording all over again and you can correct yourself so i learned a lot of endodontics myself after practicing with microscope and i realized you know sometimes uh, even my staff is not assisting well then i can train them by showing the video of the recorded uh, uh, previous case i can train students i can uh, you know publish i can write articles so all that um, i've even saved a couple of doctors from um, uh, from the litigation Uh, because uh, you know i could document certain things and they it could save them from the litigation because of microscope so it has not just the magnification use but it has a, a lot of other uses uh, in in terms of dentistry and slowly besides dentistry i started using it even for my rest of the work also so today i do a lot of work uh, under microscope including sometimes uh, the sinus lift surgery and um, Uh, restorations and all that wow. even my preparations crown preparations margin preparations veneer preparations all that i do under microscope right sir so we have a new marketing tip today ready with us <laughs> i will implement it from tomorrow i am already planning on buying a screen now <laughs> <laughs> so i think we should start the session without wasting much of the time sir it is yes, all sir. yours Sure. See you after the session. Sure. Bye, sir. Bye. All right, friends. So I welcome you all in this uh, session. It's a um, little bit longer session, uh, so I hope you are geared up to stay a little bit awake and. Um, i hope all of you have had some dinner or some food so that you can you do not feel hungry now uh, and not sleepy also uh, 
as Abhishek mentioned about Corona, uh, I'll tell you uh, my recent journey uh, post lockdown. I started my practice just a few days back, and only cases that I've been getting are endo cases, the emergency endo cases, and most of those emergencies I've solved in one sitting, uh, complete start to finish, and. Uh, Patients have really appreciated it, and even I am enjoying it. So um, it's not that um, you know everybody is wondering you know how we will start, what we will do, how we will do, how we will get money out of it. It's not like that. I'm just treating only two patients a day, and I'm able to um, generate a good income, and at the same time I'm enjoying the work, and I'm a restricted kind of a post. you know retirement uh, practice kind of work i am doing as you know he already uh, revealed um, my true age to you by telling you that i passed in 1980 so um, you can imagine it's actually the retirement time for me and it's uh, people like um, uh, anand to take over and just the way you feel that i am a pioneer today maybe 20 years down the line younger generation will feel um, you know Um, Abhishek and Anand uh, like pioneers. So you have to go on this road, keep doing your journey. That's why I've kept that road in front of you for this journey. And uh, the road map is clear. Keep traveling and never stop. And that's what even I plan to do. Never stop. So let's take the topic uh, of the day today: uh, shaping a road map to success. now talking of success in endodontics um, there are many articles published about uh, success of endodontics and uh, uh, the one important article that i would like to show you would be of uh, uh, salarvi but before that i would like to show you a road map to come to my clinic so you can see i i did not give a picture of my clinic because the title was road map so i wanted to give you something like a road map of uh, andheri west in mumbai which is um, uh, which is close to railway track uh, close to andheri station but the blue dot which you see is close to lokanwala complex and i'm housed in one of the societies where quite a few film stars and quite a few tv artists and producers and directors and all the film line related people are living and uh, i'm the odd man out in that uh, building and also work for this hospital as they introduced and right now uh, it is a, a covid hospital and uh, you can imagine what would be the situation over there in such a big uh, hospital so many corona patients getting admitted so i was talking about this um, uh, study of um, published in 2006 they also published one more study in 2004 uh, which was a survey again and this study showed that endodontic treatment is highly successful successful to the tune of above 90% and um, there is no other treatment which is comparable to the success rate of endodontics so what has happened over the years is the success rate was high but it is going higher and higher and higher with new introductions like rotary files uh microscopes ultrasonics you know better understanding of cleaning i believe uh, there will be a good uh topic on cleaning taken on later and good you know obturation techniques so that has made endodontics very challenging but also very interesting and very um uh, very much uh, likable uh, subject so when you want to do shaping what you have to look at you have to look at why are you doing the shaping because when you do root canal treatment the main idea behind root canal treatment is to remove the content which is now infected and damaged and inflamed in the canal of pulp tissue and having bacteria along with it out of the canal so that it gives chance to the body to heal in the periapical area so that the tooth is retained by the patient 
so what it means and means that the pulp tissue is not very important for retention of the tooth for long life so you can sacrifice pulp tissue and make sure that the tooth is internally into the canal space um, completely disinfected and remains in that position for a years to come that tooth will survive in the mouth and body will heal around it and for that reason you need to gain access so your first step would be preparing access and i believe that topic was already taken and then you need to prepare the canal and once you prepare the canal you clean it and then you seal it with obturation so the preparation is the fundamental beginning of the root canal treatment from where you know your entire endodontics uh, would start basically so when you do this basic root canal preparation what you need to look at is how much you should prepare and i am showing you some of the newer studies because the studies start from maybe some year 1900 but i don't want to give you those old studies this is what you see is 2019 study what it shows is just last year that the root canal treatment uh, i mean the sorry the shaping uh, or preparation techniques when you perform to the size 25 uh, to the apex it gives you a significantly cleaner canal wall compared to size 20 so the landmark instrument would be size 25 uh, size 20 will not give you as much Uh, you know significantly cleaner canal wall at the apical third whereas in the middle third and the coronal third almost all the instruments all the preparation techniques everything is almost same so that means there is a cleaner canal in the middle and the coronal third without any problems uh, while you are shape, shaping the apical uh, part of the canal and the basic size that you want to reach would be size 25 similarly another study that was published uh, recently also shows and what they studied was the apical size 30 instrument was used at the uh, preparation uh, size of 30 and they used 4% 6% and 8% uh, instruments to prepare the canal and what they checked was whether there is any improvement in cleaning ability of the shape that was provided and they found that there was not much of a difference between 4% 6% and 8% if you reach the size of 30 that means the taper plays a significant role if you have a smaller size but if you have a bigger size of the instrument taper can be reduced you really do not have to go to higher tapers similarly if you see this another study published last year shows and they actually prepared the in instruments uh, they used the instruments size 25 30 35 40 and 45 and all of them 4% taper to see you know what would be the cleaning effect of this uh, instruments and they found that uh, the standard cleaning or irrigation regimen of sodium hypochlorite and edta they found that 35 size with 4% taper gave a better cleaning and enhanced sim, uh, removal of smear layer in the apical third so probably when you reduce the taper the critical size would be size 35 for you to reach and the same study also showed that size 40 also produced a very good cleaning with uh, needle reaching quite easily close to the apex and allowing a substantial volume of sodium hypochlorite to reach the apex but it also showed that size 45 did not produce much of a difference between 40 and 45 so there is no need to go to size 45 uh, to shape a small root canal of a molar so now we understand where are we playing we are playing between size 25 and 40 so the take home message for these studies would be 
that many studies show removal of bacteria or disinfection of a canal to a large extent, but not completely, even coupled with irrigation, because all these studies actually did some irrigation along with uh, the shaping. Studies also show that increasing size and taper helps in better cleaning, but also show that greater the taper, smaller, uh, smaller the tip size to be used and larger the taper, larger the size, smaller the taper should be used. That means if you are using size 40, you should reduce the taper to size 4% or even 2%. Because the over enlargement will weaken the tooth, especially in the coronal area, which you don't want and does not add to the cleanliness and that we saw in the previous study at size 45. Also good shaping and cleaning is not sufficient. Good obturation is also mandatory for long term success. Good obturation is also mandatory to satisfy yourself because when you take a post op x-ray, you will be able to show to others like which I'll be showing you some x-rays over here that you did a good job, you provided a good shape. Because if I take a post shaping x-ray, I will not be able to show you how well I've shaped the canal. It's only after uh, post obturation, a good obturation will show how good a shape was provided by me to that tooth. So obturation reveals my shape. That's why obturation is necessary also to, you know, evaluate your work. And if you see, all the studies that are published about success and failure, they actually study the quality of observation. Nobody will talk about quality of shaping. I've not seen any study uh, which is uh, showing about quality of shaping. They show quality of cleanliness with the size and the taper, but the success rate is not talked about. That if you shape to this level, you are successful. If you shape to that taper, you are successful. Now, there's one article which shows uh, quality shaping factors and endodontic treatment amongst general dental practitioners with focus on Denmark. Friends, this is Denmark. I'm not talking about India. I will not be criticizing you. and uh, But you must read that uh, study. It is available online. And... Uh, what it shows is that what general practitioners believe that they have done is actually, and they have the confidence level that they have done so well, but it's not exactly uh, as good as they believe. There is a substantially lower quality existing than what they actually tend to believe. And they say that 40 to 60% of the teeth which are treated by general practitioners have some amount of either a quality management of the obturation because they can't check shaping and also uh, there is periapical uh, lesion following the treatment. So this particular topic uh, will help you to know exactly how much shaping should be done, what kind of shaping to, should be done, in which situation what shaping should be done. So we need to know what is shaping, what is good shaping. A good shaping would be when the canal is ready to be obturated and when the cone fit is achieved. So when is the cone fit achieved? It is when the desired shape is prepared. So the cone fit tells you that you have uh, actually reached the desired shape. And for Getting a good cone fit, you need to use system-based cones and you can't use any general cones. So if you have prepared the canal with say Pro Taper uh, Gold or Pro Taper Next or Wave 1 or any other instrument for that matter, you have to use the gutta percha matching to that particular system. You cannot take a general 6%, 4% gutta percha and try to fit into that uh, canal. That means the cone should fit the shape and not the shape to the cone because you had a 6% cone in your armamentarium you don't prepare a 6% canal and this is one article uh, that justifies uh, the system based endodontics does your gutta percha master cone fit 
and Cliff Riddle clearly showed that your master cone should fit right at the apex and not uh, have a tuck back right in the middle or in the coronal end. It should only be having at the apical end. So here what I'm trying to show you is that if my shape is right, when I'm fitting that cone into that shape, and here you can see on the right hand side, uh, the Garapacha cone seen clearly right at the apex and a round hole prepared exactly at the apex. And this is a close up view. So if you get a good fit of Garapacha exactly at the apex, the rest of the fit of the Garapacha is not important because that would be condensed with sealer and the condensation of Garapacha. But here exactly at the apex, this particular kind of fit is required. And this would happen only with proper shape. So the shaping is important because it facilitates cleaning, it facilitates uh, obturation and it facilitates better outcome. That's why uh, it becomes the mainstay of your endodontic treatment. And to understand shaping, you need to understand first of all the objectives laid, laid down by Schilder in 1974. Now he laid down and Schilder was pioneer in many ways uh, uh, besides laying down these objectives and which we still follow that he came up with warm vertical condensation technique and also um, he came up with serial preparation technique and uh, many other things. And he was the first one to show how a lateral canal can be filled. So let's look at the objectives. Your mechanical objective, which of course instrument is a mechanical uh, metal. So you need to look at the mechanically what it will do to the geometry of the canal. You should have a continuously tapering funnel from the apex to the uh, coronal end, that is the orifice. And uh, the wider portion should be at the orifice and the narrowest portion should be at the apex. And between the coron um, or orifice and the apex, there should be smooth, even flow of the canal. Also at the same time, while doing so, you should not cut more on one wall of the canal and less on the other wall of the canal. It should be symmetrically enlarged on all the walls. But you should not enlarge so much that you should weaken the root structure. And while all doing all of it, you should not disturb the original anatomy. At the same time, you should not disturb the position of the apical foramen by passing the file through the apical foramen and trying to strip the apical foramen or enlarge the apical foramen. So you should not even enlarge the apical foramen unnecessarily. That means you don't touch the sanctity of the apical constriction. Whatever you want to do, you do coronal to apical constriction. So this is what you can see diagrammatically. On the left hand side, that is A is the original canal and B is the shaped canal. And you can see there is a smooth even flow, uh, a continuously tapering preparation from orifice to apex with the narrowest portion at the apex and the widest portion at the orifice. And um, <clears throat> in between, you can see a little bit of um, straightening of the canal, but more or less the original anatomy of the canal is maintained. At the same time, if you compare the uh, apical diameter between A and B uh, shapes, it is still the same and uh, there is not much of change or nor is the position changed. Now, this is all done to have some biologic objectives. The biologic objectives would be limiting the instrumentation exactly to the apical constriction and don't go beyond it. However, you can take your glide path instruments or smaller files like 6, 8 and 10 beyond the apical constriction to maintain the patency of the apical foramen. Also while doing uh, uh, shaping, you should not uh, push the debris past the apex and cause any inflammatory reaction into the periapical tissue, causing pain to the patient. So idea is to keep the root canal treatment pain-free during the treatment and even after the treatment. Of course, the main objective would be uh, thorough debridement 
and three dimensional obturation of the root canal space which will promote the periapical healing ultimately what you want is a healed periapical tissue and staying in a healed state for the rest of the life of the patient so what does shaping do shaping aids vertical cleaning and irrigation lateral do you understand this uh, sentence if you shape only to say uh, let me show you with a slide for example let me show a pointer for example you want to fill up this lateral canal or clean the lateral canal and if you shape only up to the joint of that bifurcation you will not be able to allow irrigants to go into those branches so you need to go all the way to the apex with your shape for the irrigants to follow it so shaping allows you to do vertical cleaning but once you do shaping your file will not enter into the lateral canal you cannot do shaping of the lateral canal is the irrigant which will do the cleaning of the lateral canal so irrigation does lateral cleaning and shaping does vertical allows vertical cleaning and this is very important and that's why if you stay short if you do short obturation if you do short instrumentation due to some ledging or some other problem you are going to have problems because your irrigants will not reach there and one of the problem you might face is in this kind of a canal uh, where you know there is a sharp curvature right near the apex and the canal instead of exiting on the tip of the root exits on the side of the root and this particular sharp curvature can be missed out by producing a ledge over there and then you can have a problem in the tooth in terms of failure or periapical radiolucency so you can see this particular tooth over here and when i finish the obturation you can see a clear cut branch getting cleaned and obturated so this is what shaping will do so if i had not done enough shaping if i had not placed enough sodium hypochlorite in this particular part of the canal it would not have gone into this branch and not cleaned and of course if i had not done some kind of a thermoplasticized gutta percha obturation technique i would not get that kind of obturation as well similarly you can see in this parietal canal as well uh, the same kind of uh, obturation and this is all thanks to shaping now you can see adjoining teeth the canal is not obturated till the apex because the shape has not reached till the apex if you have a canal so fine and delicately curved all around like this you need to look at what instruments to use how to shape it how much should be shape uh, should be sh shape first in the coronal area and then how should we shape the apical area so we will talk about this a little later or this kind of multiple curvature as you can see in different directions so here you can see an s shaped canal so you want to look at this particular concavity and when you are trying to shape with suppose a stainless steel instrument this part of the canal will get shaped more as compared to this and there might be weakening or might be even a perforation a strip perforation without the knowledge in that area but at the same time if you have say, successfully shaped this canal in the same anatomical fashion does not mean you shaped it because the canal is wide buccolingually you can see how much width is existing buccolingually so you need to do some kind of circumferential filing in this canal or you need to use instruments which will shape in an oval or a ribbon shaped canal not a rotary instrument so you need to pick and choose the right instrument for your shaping apparently straight looking canal over here the center incisor if you see the left picture and then compare it to the center one which is a proximal view which you can only see on a cbct in a patient's mouth and when we started uh, working there was no cbct it is available lately only so we used to imagine all of it with our tactile sense and uh, with stiff stiff instruments and now that we have uh, flexible instruments we can actually take care of this kind of 
curvatures, but it is in a buckolingual direction. So don't think that center and sides are simple. They can also have this kind of shapes. And then you have this kind of apical uh, complex anatomies and more than 90% of branches or lateral canals or bifurcations or trifurcations exist in the apical third. So it's the apical third which you have to concentrate on. And while preparing the apical third, you have to take care of the middle third and the coronal third in such a way that you don't damage it unnecessarily. So here you can see a reasonably well prepared coronal third and middle third, but a very nicely prepared apical third giving uh, rise to a very well filled uh, apical delta. And same way a substantial amount of cleaning provided to all the canals and having so many lateral canals filled in all the areas. Same way over here, you can see a bifurcation, but it's the down pack and backfill technique that allowed my master cone to melt and flow in the branch. And you can see on the opposed obturation action, I have not taken off the rubber dam yet for you to see that it's still, you know, just immediate post-op and um, how well it fills. But it's the shaping that has allowed the cleaning to take place. So all these kind of branches, and there could be many over there. There could be a big delta over there like this, this canal. Here you can see there are so many branches. Now, when you look at this, you forget the shape, but it's the shape which has given to this obturation. Of course, you need to spend time on cleaning. If you don't do good cleaning, you will not be able to get that shape, uh, get obturation. And you will not get good cleaning if you don't have that shape. You can see again, you know, multiple canals and then branches of those multiple canals. So <clears throat> there are complex anatomies lying out there and uh, there are multiple roots. And if you take an X-ray of this tooth, this is a lower premolar, this particular uh, part of the root will not be visible so easily on the uh, radiograph and only probably a CBCT will reveal it. And so many times, like this is a failed root canal of the upper first and second premolar, which I had repeated. And you can see there are three canals in both the teeth and they're nicely shaped and obturated. So how much shape to provide and uh, how much anatomy to take care of? How much anatomy to take care of? It's so complex. You can see over here now. Uh, there are 37 types of root canal configurations identified by Versiani. Now, you know, I believe before this ignorance was bliss. I thought there were only four or five and canal anatomies as um, identified by a wine a uh, long time ago. And I used to feel proud that I'm able to fill those. But now I want any endodontist to show me all the 37 types of anatomies shaped, cleaned and obturated and documented. It will be a very tough task for anyone to do. So endodontics is still challenging and interesting and there's a lot more to achieve in endodontics. And that's why probably you can keep going on and that's why probably uh, a diagnosis of what to do with your canal, where your canal is, how to shape it, how big it is. Uh, could be arrived at with the help of CBCT. So as and when required, though I don't recommend CT, CBCT in all your root canal cases, especially the primary root canal cases, but you can take uh, CBCT whenever you feel that there could be a, a complex case. And here you can see the periapical radiolucency is in connection with the MB2 and not with MB1. Here the upper seven, this is tooth number one seven, you can see nicely filled buccal canal, but it had a branch. So if you take an x-ray, you feel you've done everything right, but you missed out on that branch. And here you can see there's an apical delta. And uh, you can see 
the periapical radial lucency is spanning from the MB1 to MB2. And probably you'll have to search MB2 over here, which would be very fine. And also it would be much shorter compared to MB1. So you will not be able to see on your radiograph where exactly to end your instrumentation because radiographic apex is not going to show you the exit of this canal over here. And you can also see the periapical lesion is in communication with the sinus. And you can see the charting of the MB2 canal over here in the buccolingual direction. So that's where your MB2 in that tooth. And you can see how fine it is and how small a file you will have to use to shape that canal. And that's why probably uh, in future, people will define their shaping on the basis of a CBCT uh, based, you know, a system, a digital system, which will like how you define what size of the implant you will use, you know, on the basis of your CBCT diagnosis, the depth and the diameter, you will use the similar um, software to identify there are softwares existing, but they are still improving upon those software and you will be able to diagnose exactly what file will fit into that canal to get the best shape. So we are heading towards that. And coupled with CBCT, if you use magnification in the form of either loops or microscope, you will improve your work like anything. So I would highly recommend <clears throat> to use microscope because, you know, in India, even general dentists do a lot of root canals. They do more root canals than an endodontist doing abroad because they do one root canal over two hours, two and a half hours. And you, by the time you do so many root canals. So the take home message uh, would be that a mental image of a three dimensional canal anatomy can be formed with the help of CBCT and it can be followed up with the use of microscope to prepare a better roadmap for shaping and cleaning of the canal. And when in doubt or when better result is desired, which of course you would want, CBCT and magnification should be used or will help. So let's look at how did we arrive to this level of endodontics the roadmap of our pioneers. It all started with the first electric engine in 1871. And the Maynard was the fun, uh, first one to shape uh, a file out of a watch spring uh, in 1838 and he used it for shaping his canal. And Arthur recommended to use small files to prepare canals. This was before the 1950 sorry 1850 in 1885 the gates glidden drill was manufactured first by Mellifor company and you can see we are still using it so many of the products that are out in the market were manufactured before 1900 or around that time you can see the k files were manufactured first in 1950 more than 100 years back even the gutta perch are old rubber dam is old so so many things in root canals are old even sodium hypochlorite is old Let's look at some of the techniques historically I'm talking about. Ingle described the first technique uh, known as standardized technique, which was like three times the size of the first file that fitted into the canal. And then there are many other uh, techniques uh, that were laid out by various um, researchers. But notably among them were step back by Clem then incremental by wine and serial preparation by shielder. And then you can see from apical to coronal end, uh, you started going towards uh, the coronal to apical end. So the focus shifted from how to go towards the apex rather from than how to go to orifice from the apex. And uh, you can see also on the minds of researchers, even at that time, the curvature of the canal was there. Like, and that's why anti-curvature filing was also devised 
where only the outer wall was uh, you know was to be shaped rather than the inner wall then came the step down and crown down you can see crown down pressureless and these were the foundations of the current uh, rotary in instrumentation technique so you can see the foundations were laid long back then came balance force which is very important technique and very very useful technique and very difficult technique to follow or practice so ron devised a technique whereby you can go against the principle of instrument of cutting a file has threads in the clockwise direction to cut and rotate and thread into the canal now if you rotate the file into anti clockwise direction it will try to come out of the canal like a screw now if you push the file against its own mechanism of coming out it will try to balance itself and stay centered in the canal so that was the idea behind balance force technique and at that time you engage the canal wall and pull the file out in a clockwise direction this is also against the nature of the file because file will go apically in a clockwise direction try to push itself a thread itself apically so you pull it and that's when it will cut the dentin so it was like a first time somebody showed how to cut dentin in a withdrawal motion then circumferential filing is also cutting dentin in you know withdrawal motion all around the canal surfaces and so many other techniques were laid down and uh, balance force was also you know the foundation for the current reciprocating files like wave one gold or reciprocal glue or many other similar systems so you can see uh, that's the growth or that's the progress of the techniques that has taken place and um, ingel was also the pioneer in laying down you know iso recommendations for the uh, instrument sizes instrument tapers like he said uh the instrument sizes would be 10 15 20 25 30 35 like that and the uh, taper would be 2% so i'm not going to go into detail because this is very primary knowledge and uh, the thread would be 16 mm in length and uh, every instrument next instrument would be 0.05 mm larger than at the tip than the previous instrument so 20 would be 0.05 larger than size 15 mm so if you look at step back technique uh, which was very popular for quite some time till the crown down became popular and the rotary became popular you explore the canal to working length first to the apex get the working length and then you do the apical preparation and till that time you follow the standardized technique and after that you increase the flare of the uh, canal by taking select sequentially larger instruments in 11 mm uh, steps by stepping back and that's why you get a 5% taper in the apical part of the canal and rest of the canal will, will be flared with gates glued in drills the problems are with the instruments first because if you see over here the instruments increase in sizes by 0.05 from 10 15 20 mm mm-hmm. but the percentage increase is different like from 6 to 8 the percentage increase is 33% from 8 to 10 it is 23% from 10 to 15 it is 50% so there is a sudden jump from 10 to 15 in the size of the in instrument in terms of diameter so what it does is that up to 10 number size the instruments are flexible but 15 number size becomes suddenly too big and very less flexible so it becomes more rigid and that's how you know that's where the problems of shaping start coming up and these are the files 15 20 25 will start producing ledges transportations deviations and all that so 20 would be 33% larger and 25 would be 25% larger so you can see this uneven increase in diameter so there were also instruments manufactured which were um, you know percentage in, in diameter increase there were other problems uh, with step back that you could not reach the apex because your needle would be size 30 and you start with 10 15 20 25 to the apex 
So the solution will not reach the apex. You could not clean where your instruments are working. There would be a lot of piston action of instrument. You would push debris towards the uh, apex and you would compact the pulp stump causing pain to the patient. You will compact dentine debris and produce, you know, kind of an artificial calcification and you will not be able to reach the apex. You will have ledges, you will have transportations. All this would happen with step back because it was done with stainless steel, which are stiff instruments. You will have elbow zip formation, so many other things. Also shortening of the canal, which you would not realize. And because of that, you will do faulty preparation. Your working length would be reduced. So all this was a problem, including breakages, you know, uneven taper, uneven resistance form, and a lot of steps and higher learning curve. So the crown down technique evolved, which was much more simplified. Basically, crown down does reverse off step back. So it does the coronal shaping first, then takes the working length and uh, explores the apical part and then does the apical shaping and then does the apical tapering and merges the apical and the coronal segment. So with the advent of rotary instruments, the transition from step back to crown down taking place and now more or less we are all following uh, the rotary technique that is the automated technique compared to the manual technique we used to follow and I have already gone from, I have already done, you know, exclusive manual technique in my earlier years to exclusive now rotary technique in my uh, current practice. So you can see step back technique had a lot of disadvantages and also it would have required more, many instruments, a lot of time taken, tiring and multiple complications and errors. Compared to that, crown down was, especially rotary was much more easy with just three or four instruments required. Learning of sizes and tapers was required because initially we needed only certain tapers. Now we need uh, different types of tapers and combination of tapers. But time taken is much less. Today you can shape a canal in just about two or three minutes. Less tiring, quicker, and but it's a little bit more expensive because of the metallurgy that we are using. So the first handpiece was devised by Rollins in 1889. So you can see the researches are taking place around that time, the pioneering researches. And he developed a root canal, specific root canal handpiece, which would run at 100 RPM. So the fractures of instruments was even there at that time in their mind. You can see it's there in your mind now also and in my mind too. So this is 1912 handpiece. And these were the end pieces um, with different types of motions, not just rotary. But you can see there was a translatory motion up and down as well as 180 degree forward and backward. So Different types of hand PCs were devised like racer, gyrometric, which was uh, reciprocating. So they were all trying to mimic your hand movements or finger movements with your hand files. And these hand PCs were manufactured almost 50 years back. And they were, I think, before their time because they had the disadvantage of the stainless steel files to work with. Had these hand pieces been available today, I think with night eye and rotary files, it would have made a big difference uh, with those hand pieces. And it's worth trying out these hand pieces all over again. Let's look at the instruments. I will go quickly over. Standardized endodontic instruments, as you see, we already described. These are K files. So K files have a square cross section and the threads are very close to each other and uh, 16 millimeter of blade. So there is more metal mass in the blade of the file. This is a headstrom file, which is a U file design and the sharp cutting edges. So these file uh, can be, these files can be used only in a pulling motion or push pull motion but they are very sharp in cutting and they can actually cut against and they can be very nicely used in circumferential filing, but they will gouge denting. This is reamer, 
the number of threads are less because it's stretched kind of a file and that's why the threads are at an angle to the long axis of the file whereas in k file the angles are more perpendicular to the long axis of the file so there are more threads in k file and more cutting blades in k file as compared to reamer so k file is a stronger file but reamer would be more flexible file and you can see there are some other modifications like you can see over here a square cross section is converted into a diamond shaped rhomboidal shape so that only two edges outer edges will cut and two inner edges will not cut and this will make a uh, file alternately cut alternately cutting blades and this will withdraw more dentine uh, out of the canal compared to k file and it will be more flexible too so you need to remember uh, all these motions like filing is push pull reaming is a uh, <clears throat> clockwise turning engage and pull but a modification of reaming is quarter turn and pull in which the reamers would be used watch winding is forward backward means clockwise anti clockwise till you wind uh, till you engage and then pull so the cutting is in pulling motion or withdrawal motion circumferential filing as you saw uh, is going all around the uh, canal walls balance force i already explained anti curvature i already explained uh, you can also blunt the threads on the inner part of the curvature uh, or outer part of the curvature selectively in anti curvature filing continuation of the rotation is like continuous rotary movement is of your current rotary files but even then you know you cannot continuously rotate all the way to the apex in between you will have to lift the hand piece to disengage the file from the canal wall so there is a picking action then reciprocation could be pure but it is not of no use so you have to have unequal reciprocation where you have more uh, angle in one direction and less angle in the other direction so in one direction it will cut and another direction it will disengage and then recapitulation it is a smaller file used to smoothen the canal wall so these are all the motions of the file and you may choose a motion to suit a file or you may choose a motion to suit a canal condition or a requirement so k file is a versatile file it is a stronger file it can be used in various motions like reaming filing watch winding push pull balance force so k file that's why it's more popular then came the nickel titanium uh, which was uh, you know first introduced by valia who was six months senior to me in nair and had a close uh, you know contact for till the time we did post graduation together he passed just six months before me and uh, that has revolutionized uh, endodontics and uh, we gradually started shifting to rotary and there are a lot of advantages of hand over rotary as you can see uh, hand would give you you know irregular shape rotary will give you symmetrical shape hand will give you less clean canals with more cleanliness in rotary less iatrogenic errors in rotary less pain quicker you know less tiring and all that and higher success rate too and these are all documented especially the success rate with rotary and there are many documentations of hand versus rotary similarly there are many documentations of steel versus nickel titanium and showing nickel titanium to be superior so only two disadvantages of nickel titanium would be there'll be more fracture of nickel titanium files because uh, steel is more resistant to fracture and it is expensive compared to steel the rest of the factors uh, rotary i mean nita is better than steel now for having a good rotary instrument what you need to have is a good flexibility uh, it should be strong in its core that's why it should be able to bear the you know twisting force uh, which is also called as torsional uh, strength of the file it should cut cleanly 
and uh, it should also not have taper lock the earlier generation of files uh, had taper lock because they were fixed taper designs so they would get locked in the canal wall very quickly and it would give you it should give you centered preparation it should not uh, you know transport it should negotiate curvatures and shape the canal at the same time and should have good cleaning ability and easy transition from one file to the next file so that it's easier to finish the shaping quickly it should be easy to learn and of course economical which is uh, probably getting there you know but still not as economical as you would want so the profiles were one such files to start with so profiles contact files uh, k3 files were the earlier files that were introduced hero shapers also were the earlier files now if you see the cross section of hero shaper this it's a triangle but the cutting angles of the triangle the cutting points or the edges of the triangle are forward bent that means they will be aggressively cutting files and when they rotate they will cut more on the outer wall because these are positive rake angles it's called as rake angle if you see k3 uh, it has a positive rake angle uh, tip on one side the cutting edge but the other two angles of the triangle are blunted which is called as radial land so this is k3 with two blunted um, cutting edges and one sharp forward positive rake angle cutting edge whereas profile has all the three blunted so there is a radial land and there is no cutting edge to the profile instrument similarly pro taper would also have three cutting angles but it will be negative uh, rake angle not a positive one so what does a positive one do it cuts like a chip it gouges whereas a negative rake angle will have a scraping action and whereas uh, the radial land will have a grinding action so all the three different uh, lands or the cutting edges will have a different cutting ability that's what you can see over here negative rake rake angle with uh, pro taper it's a balloon triangle so there is more metal mass so it's a stronger file compared to this file over here which is a concave uh, triangle so there is a less metal file but it would a metal mass but there would be more flexibility to this file so whenever you have a stronger file it will be less flexible when you have a flexible file it will be less strong now with these files you have two different types of techniques emerging one is that when you do crown down you can take a larger to smaller tips and go sequentially towards the apex so you take size 40 prepare a little bit then take 35 prepare a little bit towards the apex then 35 30 like that you can go till size 15 or 20 to the working length and then once you reach there you take a call and to how much more enlargement you want to do so you go back to size 25 30 to full working length so it's a varying tip sequence the other one would be varying taper sequence so where you keep the tip size same but you take various tapers so you can start with 10 degree taper for the coronal one third then 8 degree taper for the middle third and then 6 degree just around the bend and then 4 degree right at the apex but your tip size would be same so it could be size 20 with 10 8 6 and 4 degree taper so four different instruments of different taper will of the same tip size will finish the shaping now when you mix and match both these techniques you get different set of instruments which are now current set of instruments so you have different tapers on one file which will work like a varying tip size and varying taper size and that's how the pro taper which was the first file and then other files evolved so all the current files are having various uh, you know varying ta uh, tapers along their length a lot of fixed taper only thing is when you vary the taper the top taper could be as you increase the taper it could cut a lot of dentin coronally and might weaken the tooth substance 
so there will be some modification in the cross section of the file and the threads might end at a particular diameter of the cross section it will not allow you to cut more than that so which we call it as maximum fluid thickness so all the file current files will not allow you to cut more than a certain maximum diameter that is defined by the technique whereas if you take a fixed taper file it will continue to cut coronally so 6% taper will cut more coronally than 2% taper and here you can see the first one 15 6% cuts more dentine than 22% coronally at the same time if you compare the preparation size uh, in the coronal and the apical area the 33 is about 4 mm away at 1506 that means your tip of the needle will reach here for the irrigation but even if you are using one size larger 20 but 2% taper 30 is over here right near the coronal part 32 that means your needle will reach only here and so much cleaning will be not done and that's why the taper is important for the needle to reach deeper and that's why i showed you two different uh, papers right in the beginning increased taper with a smaller size versus increased size with a reduced taper and play between 25 to 40 why do you play between them because you need a needle of 30 to reach the apical end to clean the canal so variable taper could be not just increasing but it could be also decreasing as you go coronally so most of the files are manufactured with decreasing coronal taper and thereby not allowing you to prepare too much of the coronal end which can be proved by these few slides uh as you can see this is a molar mesial root with a mesial buckle and mesial lingual canal before instrumentation and you can see the canals were prepared with size f1 or pro taper in the, on one side and size 20 or 6 on the other side fixed taper and what you can see is with a varying taper but reducing taper towards the coronal end pro taper f1 could produce only 1.03 in the or if i say area as compared to 2006 which produced 1.16 mm now f1 has a little bit bigger taper in the tip that is 7% compared to 6 but if you go to f2 it still produced 1.01 mm compared to 2506 1.21 mm so you can see what is more harmful 2506 in the coronal area or f2 it is 8% taper yet preparing less in the coronal area if you go to f3 it still prepares the same in the coronal area because the files are designed not to cut more in the coronal coronal area but if you see 30 or 6 prepares considerably more in the coronal area now these files prepare canals like this going to start now mm -hmm. so they are centered files in the canal so they cut all around the wall pencil sharpening motion you can also use hand pro taper to start with in case you are not used to all these nickel titanium files because i am a college level uh, and undergraduate level you may not have you may not have been taught the hand file and the rotary file will give you exactly the same finish and same cleanliness and same uh, uh preparation but if you want to do a quick and regular preparation you should do with pro taper universal but now you can switch over to pro taper gold because it's a better file or an improved metallurgy so pro taper has i'm going to talk about a little bit of a, a different files over here for you to understand these are the files currently available in the market Uh, it has a progressive taper as you understand convex triangular cross section we already saw so modified guiding tip so what does does this guiding tip do it does not cut against the outer wall and produce a ledge it remains centered in the canal and variable pitch which means the distance between the two threads 
so as you go away from the tip of the file the distance between the two threads increases that means the pitch size increases and this is deliberately kept to engage more debris and pull it out of the canal this is a newer file called true anatomy and you can see these are very very conservative files and it will give you maximum uh diameter near the orifice orifice just about 0.8 mm maximum at 0.8 mm and you can see a constant taper of the same size file that is 20 25 and 35 will produce a size like this whereas with true anatomy 20 25 and 35 you will have only apical preparation and no coronal preparation you also have another file called self adjusting file which is a hollow file so which is a considerably large file but will compress itself to fit into a smaller canal and when it is compressed it will try to expand because it's like it's going to behave like a spring it will be a lateral expansion and it will engage the entire canal wall and will keep you know engaged against the wall because of its pressure of the spring action so when you move the file up and down or rotate it will cut evenly against the entire canal wall so this is also a very useful file uh, and can work uh, very well in oval canal let's look at some of the shaping protocols uh, for pro taper you would shape the coronal part first then the apical part so there are two steps of shaping coronal and the apical and then one step of finishing where you would use finishing files f1 f2 or f3 depending upon the requirement of your final size of preparation so if you look at diagrammatically or on the plastic block this is s1 in the coronal part then sx in the coronal part so here you complete the coronal shaping let me go back to the pointer view okay then s1 to working length but what it does is it produces a basic coronal shape and after that no other file after that will produce the coronal shape so you can see s2 preparing the middle shape uh, middle third shape then f1 preparing the apical shape but not the middle third and the coronal third f2 preparing the apical third f3 is also preparing the apical third so this is what is now the current generation of files doing so because of that there is a shape which is not a fixed tapered design all over the canal so you need to have the gara pacha matching to the pro taper instrument that you used last and that's why you need to use company gara pachas that we call system based so when you look at um, a tooth like this and this is taken from brown and her branson's tooth atlas you can see the canal would have this kind of anatomy and you are not going to shape everything but you are going to shape the main canals and you can see this is the upper tooth um the palatal canal you can see how much of straightening happens when you shape a palatal canal with conventional nickel titanium you can see this curvature is shaped more on the inner part and over here on the again a concave side so near the orifice the files will shape more on the concave side and near the apex it will shape more on the convex side or on the outer side so this is where the transportation will happen and a lot of debris will be left behind on the inner wall of the canal and here and here these two areas uh where on the inner aspect of the curvature where the straightening has taken place the dentin would be thinned out to a level where there could be a perforation or weakening and tooth could fracture that's why a current generation of heat treated nickel titanium will follow this particular outline and you know will still follow the shielder's objectives of course uh whatever said and done when you have this kind of anatomy at the apex you will have to prepare a little bit more of the coronal part to allow the instruments to follow this kind of apical anatomy so 
so there would be little more preparation done in the coronal end without which you will not be able to negotiate the apical leg you can see three three branches in one root or three canals in one root so these kind of curvatures you need to plan in curved canals apical third middle third and the coronal third so let's look at these curvatures separately the <clears throat> Apical third curvature can be shaped where what happens is the instrument, you know, tries to push itself against the outer wall. Few things you could do: either you can pre-curve so that it will stay centered in the canal, or you can use a sequence of small files like eight, then ten, again with a recapitulation with eight, then fifteen, then recapitulation with ten, then twenty. Then recapitulation with 15, then 25, and recapitulation with 20. Like that, if you follow this sequence, you will be able to shape better. And quite often, I follow this uh, when the canal is very tight and I'm not able to reach the apex easily, and I need to use some force. And uh, so you can actually uh, just note down the sequence. You can do anti-curvature filing, or you can do blunting of the threads. So if you blunt the threads on the outer part over here, it will cut more centered and not produce transportation. If you blunt the threads over here for the middle part of the canal, it will not straighten this part of the canal. So you have to selectively blunt the threads either on the inner or the outer side. Alternatively, alternately you can use or you can use gold, blue, or controlled memory wire. Rotary instruments. These are the current generation of files. They are more flexible, and they will be able to retain the anatomy. Conventional nickel titanium. If you want to continue using instead of using higher taper, you reduce your taper. So you can go to two percent or four percent conventional nickel titanium files. So this is when you have a very high apical one third curvature. you can also measure the curvature by you know with the snyder's method by uh, the coronal part against the apical part and see the angle of curvature so the angle of curvature more acute it is uh, or greater it is there will be more sharp or curvature sharp or the curvature more would be chance of instrument frac fracturing over there so you should use a stronger instrument and a stronger instrument is today in terms of heat treated instrument so it's a gold blue or a control memory instrument so here you can see a similar curvature on this uh mesobuckle root if you see the mb2 canal it has a similar uh, curvature which i showed on the diagram so i would use a smaller narrower file With a lesser taper, or I would use a gold or a blue or a control memory file over here. That's my end result. Luckily, this tooth is outside the mouth. See the curvature of the mesial root. But when you take an X-ray of this tooth, you will not see or miss out on the curvature, which is on the lingual side of the tooth. I will show you that. This is the mesobuccal root, mesobuccal canal. You can see how much curvature it has. But see the lingual cur uh, root curvature or lingual canal curvature. This you will not see on the radiograph. So many times you do not see many curvatures on the radiograph. But you can shape the canals. You can see the distal root of eight being shaped like that. so when you have this kind of curvature use the brand new instrument use a gold blue or control memory file and don't do too much of shaping keep the files to a smaller diameter and lesser taper as against that there is a middle curvature mid root curvature in the seven mesial root as you can see though they are nicely prepared there is a greater radius over here there is a greater angle over here there is a greater radius and more the radius more would be requirement of you know taking care of a file 
so that you do not produce too much of uh, transportation over here. This would have a greater transport transportation chance and also greater ledge formation chance. So for the middle third, treat separately the middle curve first and then the apical curve. Double curve the hand files for the middle and the apical third. Blunt the threads on the inner part so that you don't straighten that part. Even then, slight straightening of the canal might take place. Push pull action or the reaming action will straighten the curve so watch winding is safer. And use gold blue or control memory nitrite files. When you have a coronal curvature, which is just below the orifice, the best thing would be to do straight lining of the curve. You could do step down technique or you could have a coronal flare done with some instrument or you can again use if you want to keep your access preparation conservative as of now you know people are suggesting conservative access preparation then you use gold blue or similar instrument so this is early curvature as you see the blue line over here on the uh, mesial root which you will have to shift you know with your gates glid and drill to the yellow line so that much of cutting of the outer wall of the canal will have to be done to straight line the canal. So this could be achieved with either headstone files cut in circumferential on the outer wall or gates glued in. They are the best suited instruments or protaper SX which will also give you a flare at the same time you can brush it against the outer wall. And uh, you can use ultrasonic tips like three of StarTex or Pro Ultra, and you know brush against the outer wall, or you can use uh, Steve Buchanan's uh, LAXS burrs. They have some you know piezo-like tapered instruments which will cut against the, uh, which can be pushed against the outer wall. So what it will do is when you cut this triangle of dentine away. Uh, the file will move much more straighter into the canal. This will reduce the chances of breakage, chances of ledge formation, more chances of negotiating the apical curve and uh, other complications. So you move the file towards the outer words. Be careful that the, the file body of the file should be pushed outwards and not the handpiece, not the handle. When you just tip the handle, you might push this file in the opposite direction. So don't tip it, push it. And when you push, you need to feel that the tip of the file is pushing and not the handle of the file is pushing. So only counter argument to this would be that pericervical dentin is removed. Pericervical dentin is uh, you know, four millimeter, millimeter coronal and six millimeter apical dentine to the crestal bone. So this 10 millimeter zone next to the crest of the bone, uh, alveolar crest, is the important dentine which should be preserved as much as possible for the strength of the tooth. So straightening will reduce that. Let's look at S-shaped canals. It will have a coronal curvature, middle curvature, and the apical curvature. They are dealt with separately, especially if you are using hand instruments. Blunting of threads is needed in the inner part of the curvature to maintain the anatomy. Otherwise, we will have a lot of straightening and weakening and also uh, perforation, strip perforation, which you will not, never see. Reduce the taper of the instruments. Use heat treated night time and use the instruments only once because these instruments are greatly stressed and they can break in the next canal. So here you see a curvature, double curve in both the teeth, considerable amount of curvatures when you see post obturation and this is what I meant in the beginning that is the x-ray, post obturation x-ray that shows how well you have tape, uh, shaped your canal. So you can see how well I've shaped my mesial root of the seven or the distal root of the six and seven both. So this is how the canals are shaped and it's exactly like how that Shielder's objective 
uh, diagram was shown. But at the same time, you can see the width of the route is so narrow. So it's a very delicate route. So that's why my preparation is much narrower. So you can imagine what instruments I must have used. And that's why I want to show you the true anatomy file. How it will shape the S shape curvature. So it's a set of five files. And here you see an S shape curvature. Not very difficult, but still there for you to understand. So first instrument would be a 10 number file that will go and explore the canal to the apex. If 10 doesn't go, you can go with eight or six, then come back to 10 gradually. Once the 10 goes to working length, you take the working length. Clinically, you will take an apex locator and see a zero, zero reading and then measure it. The first instrument is supposed to go to the first curve and that's where the orifice modifier, the first file is used. Here in that case, it's going up to 13 millimeter mark. And you can see the advantage of using this kind of blocks, end of blocks will be easy to set the stoppers. Lubricated file with substances like chelators, two, three insertions. This is a 20 number file with 8% taper. And they have come up with a plastic needle, so it is more flexible than a steel needle, a size 30 and tapered. So it will actually really uh, go into the canal quite well and not buckle. So the coronal preparation is completed. Recapitulate with 10 number file. Do some push pull. So whatever we talk. Then this is the glider file. We also call this glide path file. Very shortly, I'll take glide path instruments for you to understand what they do. Go to working length. So this, this instrument is preparing the glide path for the rest of the double curve. And preparing the road map for the shaping files to follow. And you saw they were controlled. Now this is the size 20. 4% taper, but variable taper. So again, as you saw, it does not produce any coronal cutting. And uh, this goes very quickly to the apex. Irrigation. Then size 25, but it's actually size 26. And if you see this file is uh, having a wavy outline, it's not straight file like a protocol. And you, when it is rotating also, you can see the waves. It's a size 26, four percent taper. And so easily it reaches the apex in a curve, double curve coming. Irrigation. You can see the canal also is fairly clean. The paper point and cones exactly match the size of the instrument. And you can easily finish fixing. That's it. So that's true anatomy for you. You also have C-shaped oval ribbon shaped canals and there will be presence of root concavities on those roots. So circumferential filing is required in these kind of canals. And coronal part can be treated with straight line in such cases. So instruments like ProTaper Next, XP Endo, 
which work in a dual axis or an off-center design work better in this. I will show you those files as well if time permits. Uh, or even a self-adjusting file will work in such situations. So this is a file which will require a self-adjusting file or maybe protect for next because we want to go bacolingually as well as easy distally. This is a C-shaped canal. That was a ribbon shape, uh, the previous one. And you can merge the mesial and the distal segments into one and you can get a shape like that. In a retreatment of a seven, uh, four, seven, I suppose. And uh, you can see two canals left filled, mesial and distal. And there was a communication in between, which was filled with debris, as you, as you can see on the left hand side uh, slide. And on the right hand side, you can see over here, um, it is enlarged. But this enlargement was done with ultrasonics. You could also use gate slid and drill in such cases. And it became a single canal with a mesial and distal extension. And you can see nicely filled. Then you have calcified canals. So the negotiation is very important in this case. Shaping is still the same. And for that, you use uh, ultrasonic files. So I use uh, either <clears throat> instruments like um, StarTex, tip number three, or Pro Ultra, uh, or even satellite uh, uh, ultrasonic files. Or, and with that, I can go in the middle of the route. You can see over here, if you go off center, if you do not know exactly where the center of the tooth is, you might produce perforation. So there's a very high chance of having perforation in such canals. So you need expertise and you need to go really slow in this case. And every one or two millimeter, you take a radiograph to evaluate whether you're going uh, in the center or you're going off center. Luckily for the operator, we stopped and uh, referred the patient to me. And this is uh, after completion. So this is StarTex, uh, the tip number three uh, helps a lot. I will just give you one example of it, uh, how it removes calcification from the coronal part. Here is the pulp stone. Because all these calcifications are hard, but not as hard as the original dentine. So it will be selectively removed like this. And then you can see the flowing shape. <clears throat> so there are certain precautions you need to look at. Follow guidelines. Don't go beyond 500 RPM. 300 RPM is ideally suited for most files. You can increase or decrease the torque as per the canal conditions. Like larger canal, you can increase the torque. Straighter canal, you can increase the torque. But narrower and curved canals, you decrease the torque. Each file should be used for a very short duration in the canal, like three to five seconds, and for a short number of strokes. Don't go from coronal to apical completely with one file. In between, you remove it after three to five seconds and three to five strokes. And discard files. Nowadays, uh, I would recommend discarding after every single use. And I've been doing this uh, for quite some time now, and uh, I feel very safe with that. The moment file stops, so you might experience that sometimes the file does not go to, towards the apex. It will stop somewhere and you will have to push hard on it. And the moment you start pushing hard on it, you are going to damage the file and damage the canal both. So stop immediately, take a 10 number file, pre-curve it, and then try to recapitulate beyond that stop. Uh, and do that with a little bit of um, lubricant or a chelating agent. You will be able to negotiate. And this step is a must every time a file stops in the tunnel. Every few seconds, remove the file, clean the debris. If the debris is existing on the file, it will not cut. And prepare a glide path before you take any rotary file. Use motors. Let's look at the motors. 
So this is a, a handpiece cum motor in a single device. So this is a handpiece attached to the motor, X Smart motor, and I've been using this for many years now, close to 15 years, and nothing has happened to it. And my staff loves it. They take out only this motor and give it to me. Unless I want to use reciprocation, then they take out uh, X Smart Plus, which has rotary and reciprocation both. Now in these uh, motors, I also have this Wave 1, uh, which is reciprocating as well as rot rotary. You can actually control the uh, speed. You can control the torque and uh, you can set it up as per your liking. And you should have the auto reverse. So if you have auto reverse, uh, whenever you exceed the torque limit, which you have set on the motor, the file will go in anti-clockwise and will prevent you from pushing the file further into the canal unnecessarily. So that's a safety mechanism all the endo motors of current uh, generation have. Currently, I'm using this particular uh, motor, which is a, a cordless motor, but all the functions are actually loaded, loaded on in the form of an app on the iPad. Because of the corona issue, I will keep this iPad very much away from the patient, close to about seven eight feet, seven to 10 feet away from the patient, right in the corner of a room. And I will select whatever functions my motor, uh, the handpiece wants to perform on that iPad beforehand and keep it. So my file is pre-decided which particular set I'm going to use. And everything is possible on that iPad. And then I will just sleeve now it is possible to completely see, sleeve this handpiece so you can prevent contamination when you insert this handpiece in the mouth of the patient. Of course, you have used a rubber dam, but in spite of that, you need the protection for the handpiece. And then insert the file through the sleeve. Use it. You can have these uh, features on the handpiece itself, but it's cumbersome to use and press, you know, especially in current time. Uh, to uh, press these uh, switches. I don't want to use my contaminated fingers. I just want to use one finger to press the switch and stop and start the handpiece. This is also a very good handpiece, but uh, again, the same thing. Right now, I would not recommend. I used to like this motor uh, very much till it got spoiled uh, because of some mistake of my staff who put even the cord into the autoclave and melted it. Otherwise, it's a, a very good motor called Dentaport. And there's another uh, motor from Cybron, which uh, rotates the file in clockwise direction to 600 degree. And then when it starts engaging, it turns into reciprocating movement uh, to 360, 370 degree forward and 50 degree backward to disengage the file. So it's called adaptive motion technology. So what are the current new evolutions? One evolution is glide paths. As of now, you see a lot of glide path instruments are coming up in the market and a lot of research is being done on the glide path uh, formation. And then heat treatment. A newer generation of glide path instruments are also made of heat treatment nickel titanium. So what is glide path? Glide path in endodontics is existence, which is rare, or preparation, which has to be done most of the time, of a smooth passage of a canal from orifice to the apex, facilitating the shaping file to follow the pathway. So that is, in short, glide path. So this is a glide path for, in the form of a track for any kind of vehicle or train to move. This is a glide path for skiing the snow track. This is the glide path for the tram. This is the air current, which is the glide path for the parachute. So it exists. A lot of movements take place as per the glide path. Now here you see there is a bifurcation, which direction the tram will go. So that's where you have to pre-curve your file to select the direction. So whenever you find bifurcation, you have to pre-curve the file. And that's why probably heat treated night eye, which will 
not retain the shape memory effect will be useful here so gold blue control memory wire can be pre curved and can be selectively placed onto that particular track and allow the tram to go on that direction so the glide path required because normally shaping is done with larger to smaller files in rotary and they will not be able to easily penetrate into the canal so you need certain steps of glide path to prepare a basic smooth flow it's like a water slide when you sit on the top you will slide to the bottom so let's look at the steps in detail first would be negotiate start with 10 number file with a passive insertion as far as it goes it might go to two thirds it might go to full length it might not go at all if it doesn't go full length then go with eight number six number till you negotiate to the working length if it doesn't go doesn't matter canal could be very very hard to reach the apex so then start moving 10 number file in a watch binding fashion we call catheterize how you put a thread through the needle same way catheterize and um, watch winding motion movement three or four such uh, movements and file will start moving apically if it doesn't or if it moves only a little bit then take eight number do watch winding do six number watch winding till you reach the working length once you reach working length with six number say then go to eight number working length then number working length so basic idea would be make 10 number reach the working length once you reach working length establish patency that means take this file slightly beyond the working length half to 1 mm beyond the working length which is required this will allow you to measure the working length with apex locator if there is a debris at the working length at the apical constriction apex locator will not work once you establish patency you get your length you secure the canal that means you make sure that canal is smooth enough for the files to easily follow at least the 10 number file so for that reason you do watch winding and short push pull then watch winding and larger push pull and watch watch winding and full length push pull so gradually increase the vertical amplitude of your push pull till you completely smoothen the canal and you feel that 10 number file is extremely loose in your hand and you feel as if it's doing nothing in the canal till that time you keep using the 10 number file and this is the this is the success you know if if you follow up to here properly you will always get a successful uh, preparation following this after this it's very simple select any one particular dedicated glide path file uh, which is nickel titanium a uh, rotary file and finish the early shape of the canal which will actually establish the road map and the dimension in a way that the tip of the first rotary file will easily enter into the canal i hope all of you understood this so the glide path will establish smooth pathway passage reduce the torsion on the rest of the files reduce the cyclic fatigue on the rest of the file reduce the tip lock and taper lock because the original canal size is already of that size improve the shape and maintain the original canal anatomy it will also reduce screwing less formation transportation zip formation elbow formation strip perforation and all those and especially instrument separation and this has been also documented there is a considerably less instrument separation if you prepare a good glide path so let's look at the instruments manual instruments are k files i put the 15 number a little bit away why this is my falling out of my uh, favor so it's 6 8 and 10 i'm still using but 15 number i'm avoiding to use because as you saw it's a 50% larger file than 10 number file so it's becoming very stiff flexo files pathfinders k reamers d finders pro finders these are special glide path files c pilot files nitiflex files which are nickel titanium hand files 
C plus files, which are rigid files. So if you have a calcified canal, you need a C plus file. Then you have rotary files for pre-shaping your path files, 13, 16, 19 size, two percent taper. Pro glider, which is starting at two percent, ending at eight percent, multiple taper, variable taper file, single file, G files again two file set, V taper, pre shape. These are two file sets, endo wave, two file set, explorer again two file sets. For <clears throat> K files, I would use uh, stainless steel or ready steel files, which are pre sterilized files available. If I want to bend the instrument i would bend like this with a specific bending instrument so that it can follow this kind of curvatures this is pro glider compared to your 15 number file you can see the back end of the canal that is the coronal end of the canal is prepared so well that your next file will easily fall into place so pro glider is suited probably as a glide path with any file in the world So that's how it looks like. It's made of M wire technology. Uh, again, it's a heat treated file. And you need to smoothen, as you can see over here, where the arrow is, this part of the canal with 10 number file. And then use Pro Glider or this part of the canal so that the file can follow this passage. And then use Pro Glider file or even this part of the Canal and then use Pro Glider file. This is Pro Finder 13 or 10, 13, and 17. This is a C plus file, which are stiff files, so they can go through the calcified part of the canal. So, John West was the one who described uh, this, uh, everything in detail, and he said that you do with K10 initial watch winding, restrictive dentin is removed with this, and then do vertical in and out motion with one millimeter amplitude carefully and then gradually increase the vertical amplitude till the file becomes completely smooth and he coined a terminology called super loose 10 number file so get your 10 number files to a super loose level so this is watch winding you already saw that this is uh, up and down filing motion push pull this reaming motion, quarter turn and pull. The super loose 10, side, 10 file is at least bare minimum you should get. 15 file passively reaching the apex is ideal. 20k file reaching apex but maybe a little bit of engagement is still fine. And uh, increasing the canal diameter with a pre-shaping file or a first rotary file. Uh, that is also good. And this is, uh, you know, a result of not preparing a glide path and missing out on the curvature and then producing a perforation. And this is how we repaired it. So again, another problem with glide path, the curved canal glide path was not prepared. So the next file got locked and broke and the patient was referred to me. So let's look at this video uh, of the glide path. That's the eight number file going smoothly till the apex and with the patency. Then a path file number one, 300 RPM, torque of two on X band. Go to working length or little beyond, doesn't matter. Because glide path instruments can go slightly beyond working here. Then 16 number file, night eye, M wire, 2 percent taper, 300 rpm, torque of 2, and then 19 number file. So you can see a 19 number file could easily retain the original anatomy and enlarge the canal to size 19. But from 19 to 20, a 20 number file is so stiff, it started producing transportation and then a ledge. So this is what happens when you try to use stainless steel. So anything beyond 10 number 
go to night time even in glad path similar thing is there in the <clears throat> s shape canal so i'll skip that video measure your working length with apex locator which is the apical foramen apical constriction and which is about 0.5 to 1 mm short of the root or radiographic apex so ac it is written over there that is your apical constriction exactly over there which is also the cemento dentinal junction or cdg and you need to use some electronic apex locator which is of good quality there are some good ones which i have in my clinic which i use okay finally let's look at the sequence of the shaping 10k file for initial exploration approximate working length and uh, coronal two thirds preparation with a glide path file like say pro glider which is about 3 mm short of the guest or approximate working length then flare the coronal portion with shaping files like s1 and sx of if in case you are using pro tapo or modifier file of true anatomy if you are using true anatomy if you are using uh <clears throat> any other file system you use that particular shaping file or coronal flare file irrigate then 10 number file again for apical exploration achieve patency get working length with apex locator and rest of the file in case you are using protaper s1 s2 f1 f2 to working length if the canal is curved use protaper gold the coronal part you can use a uh, normal protaper but for apical part in a curved canal you use protaper gold for true anatomy use glider small prime medium i will be show you a true anatomy video and then do cone fit now let's compare the preparations i'm trying to activate the video of pro taper yeah so coronal two thirds that much shaping with um, s1 sx coronal two thirds that much shaping with a single file of modifier over here in true anatomy but before you do that if the canal is difficult take pro glider so in that not necessarily should go to the apex then pre curve go to working length check the working length and then finish your shaping with uh, s1 s2 f1 f2 whatever size you want okay same thing with true anatomy you already saw that i just would like to go over here to the last part of the video so that you understand the difference between the two files and i'm placing the gutta percha in both the canals one is true anatomy preparation the other one is pro taper and you can see the difference between the size of the two gutta perchas canals are more or less of the same size that's the difference between the two canals so if you have a very narrow root select true anatomy if you have a normal root select pro taper or any similar file that was the idea behind showing you this videos 
I hope I'm doing okay. Um, just having a little bit more to continue. I hope you're not getting bored. So these are the uh, different types of uh, heat treatments. Let me just talk a little bit about two more files. One is ProTaper Next. I showed you that pencil sharpening motion, which is centered preparation. That is ProTaper. Whereas this is off-center design. So it is helically preparing the current. So this file will have a swagger, like a serpentine movement when it enters into the canal. So it has got dual axis, works on two axis, and it will cut broader preparation than its own uh, dimension. So let's look at the video of how ProTaper will work. This is ProTaper next. It's now a rectangular cross section but off center so only two angles will cut at a time as you can see and there will be no you know locking of this file in the canal so there is no screwing action also there are reduced points of contact because of this this will allow more space for the debris so this will remove debris very well also, there will be less force or torsional force on the file as compared to centered file which has more contacts, you can see. This is the comparison. So, if you see a common way of using it, this is your sodium hypochlorite. And this is how this file will work against the wall, circumferentially. So when you want to remove a lot of debris and buccolingually as well, you know, oval canals and all, you should select this file. As you can see over here, it's removing so much of debris, the X1 file itself. Irrigate and then take X2 and finish your shaping. So two files, very quick, very efficient and whenever you have a non-vital tooth with a lot of debris, you can use this file. You can see so quickly it finishes the shaping and you can see the debris being pulled out of the canal. And this is how you will see a cleaner canal immediately after that. Technically it's a, a set of five files but you use normally only two files and similar to off-center design there are other files coming up in the market. True Chef is one, XP Endo is another one and uh, they do give you you know more envelope of motion compared to the centered files. Now compared to all this when the file gets locked in the canal, you want to free it up from the canal wall. Then you take the file in anti-clockwise, reverse the file. And that's why this particular new movement has come into picture called reciprocation or alternating rotation or unequal re uh, reciprocation. And some parameters were studied and you can see changes in dentin volume, percentage of shaped canal walls, degree of canal transportation, everything was same with F2 in reciprocation as compared to full sequence and uh, it was almost the same except the reciprocation was much faster. So one angle, cutting angle is more and the reversing angle is small. So this is how it will rotate in the canal. It will free itself up every 150 degree forward rotation. So 150 forward, 30 reverse, 150 forward, 30 reverse like that. Eventually it will complete 360 degree revolution. So it's a rotary file, but breaks the rotary cycle in between. And wave one gold is one such file with four different files. The advantage of this file is that there is so much of reduced torsion on the file. That one file can finish your shaping. So normally I would use 25 uh, size file to finish my shaping. 
unless the canal is larger then i would use 35 or 45 or if it's an mb2 canal i would use a 25 similarly if with a blue heat treatment reciprocal file is available which is also extra, extremely flexible similar to wave one blue these files can be pre curved and used and uh, it has a rapid preparation technique i call it as a rapid pre preparation technique because there is a single file reduced torsion uh single file shaping so one file only has to be used gold heat treatment on the file balance force movement less cross contamination do not use the file again because it's a single use file pre curving possible good choices of file sizes available so choose any one one size and finish so this is pro taper shaping that um, canal small learning curve and reduced working time which is more important in today's uh, time so my sincere uh, advice would be to switch over to this these reciprocating files because you can finish your shaping in just about minute and a half we don't have to get exposed to patients uh, you know aerosol for a longer time or droplets coming out of patients mouth for a longer time so after every uh, movement you can re reciprocate and you can go straight to the apex now this apical movement can be broken into two or three cycles so go to coronal uh, two thirds withdraw the file clean then go to a little bit further withdraw the file clean and then go third time to the apex but it will cut very quickly you can see over here so quickly it has cut so you will have all these procedural errors uh, if you don't follow the sequences which i showed the techniques which i showed the glide path formation but in spite of all the correct preparation you will have all these extensions of the canal anatomy which will need to be taken care of with irrigation where your piles cannot reach So there are many parts of the canal which are remaining unprepared. You can see studies show close to even in some canals up to 34-35 percent of the canal wall is untouched. So a lot of irrigation simultaneously needed. Also, try to understand canal anatomy in three dimension so that you do not have this kind of breakages, which you will have to refer to endodontists like Anand or me to remove it and work. or when sharp curvatures are existing you know you damage the canal anatomy in a way that you will not have success the transportations but switch over to nickel titanium at any given time because this particular study shows that hand stainless steel versus nickel titanium instrumentation by <clears throat> dental students showed that low risk of procedural errors with nickel titanium rotary instruments and greater preservation of tooth structure and much quicker so even dental in experience dental students also could prepare much better with nickel titanium rotary as compared to hand stainless steel don't push the files beyond the apex because you will strip the apex like this or like this and you will have overfilled canal like this so whenever you have a lot of sealer going past or gutta percha extruding past it's not just a nice puff all the time it could be overfilling which will cause a lot of pain to the patient also remember that files can break because of two reasons as you can see there is a plastic deformation which is cyclic fatigue and elastic deformation So one is torsion torsion is when the file is overly engaged in the canal and still trying to rotate 
when you are trying to force the file to rotate to cut the canal it is refusing to do so at that time the file will be overloaded loaded with for torque of force and it will break and cyclic fatigue is something where the file is even though loose in the canal it will be against the curved portion of the canal so there will be constant flexing on the inner part and extension on the outer part and it will uh, eventually build fatigue in the metal and it will break so there is a level of a peak that reaches in that fatigue to counter torsion use torque control motors set up the torque control motors at auto reverse and reduce the torque setting that is one way to do it use a reciprocating file that's another way to do it reduce the force on the file while inserting gradually insert that's the third way of doing it use a stronger file that's the fourth way of doing it for cyclic fatigue use heat treated nitride because they are stronger to bear the cyclic fatigue so they can bear more amount of cyclic fatigue reduce the speed also less the speed less the flexion and extension uh, reduce number of revolutions reduce uh, the number of revolutions to only 1 second so you can rotate the file only for a few revolutions and finish your cutting for that reason you use a new file so it will quickly cut and uh, maybe pre curve the file if you require that will also reduce the cyclic fatigue use less tapered file that will also have less cyclic fatigue generated another important thing would be improve glide path so all these things will reduce cyclic fatigue and reduce breakages to avoid ledges pre curve and then negotiate and you will be able to take care of the canal also patency very important to have at the apex remove all the debris and then finally when do you stop shaping that's the last part when your apical part is properly taken care of in the shape and that's called working width so when you place a 10 number file if it goes beyond the apex smoothly that means the apical constriction is larger than 10 when you place a 15 number file that goes beyond the apex without rotation that means apex is larger than 15 when you go with 20 if that also goes past the apex then go with 25 if 25 does not go past the apex and stops at the apex that means your canal diameter at the apical constriction is 25 and you need to prepare your canal to size 25 only that is called apical or apical gauging so one way to prepare the canal is to determine the apical gauging what is the size that fits at the apex so what is the first file that fits at the apical constriction not in the canal but at the apical constriction and finish the shaping to that file the other way would be to know the first file that cuts the white dentinal shaving right at the apex so when you see the dentinal shaving as you see in the yellow file over here right at the tip that means it has cut at the apex and you don't need to cut too much of dentin at the apex so when is the tooth is ready for obturation so tooth is asymptomatic there is no visible uh, you know fistula or swelling or something like that proper shaping is completed which you have done the tuning that means you have checked the shape of the canal thorough debri uh, debridement is completed after the shaping and uh, <clears throat> complete drying of canal is possible there is no discharge the paper points and no negative culture which we used to do in the past now it's not done and good cone fit is achievable so that's we talked about in the beginning the cone fit decides your shape so if you get a good cone fit right in the apical 3 mm like this what you see not in the middle of the canal but right at the tip of the or apex of the canal then it is a good cone fit so you get a tuck back right at the apex the entire cone will be loose till it seats and you will get the tuck back right at the apex and then you stop 
so you get a good matching gp which will fit right at the apex which should be system based and then you can complete your obturation i suppose obturation will be taken by uh, dr vivek uh, later, later on i hope uh, the weight was worth and uh, i covered a lot of uh, the shaping part for you to keep in mind what will work best for you thank you and have a safe 2020 and good night to all of you i'll stop sharing my screen now yes sir thank Thanks you so lot, much sir it was an amazing session right from the beginning of endodontic till what is coming in the future i think so you have covered everything very elaborately and very nicely a very very thorough lecture sir thanks a lot thank you sir everything was covered including the history of endodontics you have almost seen the uh, the beginning of endodontics from where we started the revolution rotary hand you have seen everything and you have beautifully shared your experiences as well thank you so much sir for the amazing lecture first of all it was really very informative thank you and we have many questions anand you have any questions in the pipeline first uh yes a few sir is it mandatory this is question from dr munmun devnath is it mandatory to endodont the canal to 6% taper in every case absolutely not and you saw i uh, showed some files of true anatomy uh <clears throat> if you go to higher size the taper is reduced to just 3% in those uh, files so they are very narrow files 4% and 3% so you need not so it is just on the anatomy of the tooth we'll decide the taper yes. the root is narrow keep it to a narrower taper the root is bigger and wider keep it to a greater taper great sir so uh a question from dr acharya miral in the case of vital bleeding pulp how do you manage the working length and preparation in the same setting uh the bleeding pulp uh, will eventually stop bleeding once you finish the removal of the pulp completely so it's not a, a major uh, problem uh sometimes uh, after the shaping is completed when you irrigate with sodium hypochlorite the bleeding automatically stops with sodium hypochlorite because it's the coagulant you need not worry in spite of that if it doesn't stop you can take a little bit of a, a ferrous sulfate or alum on the tip of the paper point and place against the bleeder and hold it for a minute and it will stop the bleeding okay i didn't know this great thanks a lot sir so what is your instrument for coronal flaring other than sx this is a question from dr upma narang sachdeva uh many times i use gates glid and drill very carefully and uh, sx that is another one and sometimes i use a um a what you call pro ultra ultrasonic tip for uh, you know moving selectively against the outer wall especially when i'm doing the retreatment so that okay. tip removes the gutta percha at the same time cuts against the outer wall great so one more question from dr disha jain how do you do blunting of the threads of the instrument a nail cutter a nail cutter can be used mm. oh, wow <laughs> thank you filer so filer 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 a nail filer or a nail cutter yeah. filer it has a filer inside the nail cutter so that filing yes. part can be used mm. so dr abhay singh how during access cavity preparation how to minimize aerosol generation i think so that is the most prevalent question today uh two things which i am experiencing now since i am doing lot of root canals uh <clears throat> rubber dam must 100% a uh, second thing is um hand pieces which do not generate aerosol so my recommendation would be speed increasing contra angle hand pieces rather than aerosols 
So you do get contra angles which are speed increasing, one is to five speed increasing, use along with a micro motor. So there is no air coming out, there is no water coming out, or uh, it's the handpiece that um, uh, increases the speed of the motor from thirty thousand rpm to one lakh fifty thousand rpm. Yeah, and all those handpieces also accept air rotor burrs, so you don't need to buy separate burrs as well. So only time uh, you might have a problem is that the at one one lakh fifty thousand rpm you are heating up the tooth. So every now and then your uh, staff, uh, chair side assistant will have to put syringe, you know, cold saline with the syringe on the tooth. Yes. So this is reducing the uh, aerosol and hold okay. high vacuum suction uh, against that high vacuum suction of sixteen millimeter diameter tip. Yes, sir. That is very important. Sixteen millimeter diameter. Uh, so, a question from Dr. Mushtaq: When to choose a reciprocating file? Current times. I want to finish very quick. I don't want patient's mouth to open to remain in my mouth for too long. Some uh, some file. Hmm. Okay. And. Um, and when there is a you know requirement to finish fast like patient is gagging mouth opening is low and you want do not want to shift to too many instruments and you know patient is very apprehensive not allow, allowing you to work like a child in children invariably i use reciprocating file because in one file i can finish before they even realize what i'm doing great so we have a question from dr gerard messi what is your opinion about C plus files and C files? Are they better than K files? Uh, not really. In a regular uh, shaping technique, uh, you would use K files uh, for a normal standard root canal. But if the canal is supposed calcified or there is a retreatment going on and there is a dentine mud right near the apex for last couple of millimeters and you are not able to negotiate that, then you use C plus, C plus file. Okay. Abhishek, one last question from my end, then you can take over. Sir, your opinion about patency and how do you recommend it? Vital cases, non vital cases, retreatment cases? Uh, definitely, patency is a, a little bit of, of a controversial topic, but um, <clears throat> I personally feel. Patency can be done only uh, with smaller files. You cannot take your shaping files beyond apex. That is a strict no-no. That means by 6, 8 and 10 number file can go a little bit beyond the apex and they are not going to cause any problem whether it's a vital tooth or a non-vital tooth. Patient doesn't feel anything if a 6 number file goes half to one millimeter beyond apex even without local anesthesia that is one thing secondly some people have apprehension that you are pushing debris beyond the apex that is also not happening because the tip of a six number eight number ten number five cannot carry so much of debris beyond the apex and uh, <clears throat> lastly you are using a 30 gauge needle for one and half inch into the tissue to give a block injection. Right. You insert into the tissue and give a block to the patient at the time of root canal treatment when you do a lower root canal. Do you expect pain for a one and a half inch insertion of a 30 gauge needle? What is the size of a 30 gauge needle in terms of endodontic instrument? It's a size 55 number endodontic instrument. So you are inserting 55 number endodontic instrument to one and a half inch into the tissue and you are not expecting any pain. You are in and fact telling the many times. <laughs> <laughs> so don't worry about uh, these things. Good perspective, sir. <laughs> yes, question from Sir Muniba Ansari. C-shaped canals. Can you please elaborate on shaping motion when used with hand and rotary files? C-shaped canals, uh, while uh, they are used in the same watch winding action. 
uh, or a quarter turn and pull action, but basically uh, they are meant for watch winding action to penetrate through the debris. So uh, they would be uh, pre-curved generally because they are stiff files. So if you have to negotiate debris, uh, it would be in a curved curve portion of the canal. So use a, a C plus file facing the tip facing the curved portion of the canal, and it should be thoroughly lubricated with a, a lubricant like a chelator. Okay. And then it can be used in watch winding action. If you want to negotiate a ledge, for example, then there is a specific motion. You pre-curve the file and the tip of the file should face the ledge. Hmm. When the ledge is encountered, you will feel the stop. And at that point in time, you turn the file 180 degrees and push. It will bypass the ledge and then you do a very short push-pull till you smoothen the ledge. So that's the way you use C plus file to negotiate the ledge as well. Sir, if file bends at more than 45 degrees or 90 degrees at the pikeal end, what does it indicate? If a canal bends 45, if a file yes. bends 45, that means there is a sharp apical hook uh, right at the tip of the root, which is very common. That means the canal is exiting later, laterally rather than uh, apically or rather at, at the tip of the root. So yeah, you have to be very careful because radiographically it's going to show you a short obturation quite often, especially if it is exiting buccally or lingually. So you have to rely typically on your apex locator for your working length and not on your radiograph. I think that is all for tonight. I don't think so. We have more questions related to glide path tonight. Anand. I guess we are done, Abhishek. Yeah, cleaning. Yes. Uh, shaping and glide path preparation is done. We have questions on other topics which are still to be covered. So I guess we can keep it for the other day. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. It was an amazing session. As always, it's an honor to have you. And I guess we gave you two of the heaviest topics to cover in endodontics, surgical endodontics and shaping. And you are the right person to it to do the right respect to the topic. Absolutely. And it's actually a, a textbook by itself, the shaping topic. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, covered, everything, uh, covered everything. This much time is like doing injustice to it. <laughs> Wallab, sir, it is like endodontics, 80% endodontics to lecture mein gaya. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Abhishek, any announcements? Yes. Uh, there are plenty of questions related to irrigation. Yes, we will be covering irrigation in the next webinar with Dr. Mandar Pimpikar, sir, this Wednesday, same time. Thank you so much. Please keep your questions ready and try our level best that everything should be covered. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Thank everyone. So bye-bye. Good again. night. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. And have a safe uh, 2020.